so far we've talked about the view of magnetism uh, as uh, originating from magnetic monopoles and we have talked about the concept of magnetic field created by a magnetic monopole at a distance r from it and we have introduced the concept of magnetic flux now um, the SI point of view is basically to look at magnetism from the uh, circulating currents uh, uh, approach and basically this is based on uh, two important uh, discoveries uh, the first one is uh, Ørsted, Hans Christian Ørsted, in 1820 discovered that a magnetic needle in the compass, compass is deflected in the neighborhood of an electric current. So let's see how this works. Uh, we're going to watch a section of a video. I'm going to give you the link at the bottom. In 1820, Danish physicist and chemist Hans Christian Ørsted was setting up materials for a lecture. His materials included an early kind of battery called a voltaic pile constructed of copper and zinc plates in a dilute acid solution and a wire held in place here by a set of clamps. Ersted and other scientists of his day knew that when a wire was connected between the positive and negative terminals of a battery, electricity would flow through that wire. Electrons actually move from negative to positive. However, the convention is to think of electrical currents as moving from positive to negative. So that's how we'll show it here, using red particles. Back then, scientists still had much to learn about electricity. Preparing for his lecture, Ørsted made a very important discovery about the phenomenon, quite accidentally. Among Ørsted's scientific paraphernalia was a compass. Its needle, of course, pointed north in alignment with the Earth's magnetic field. Ørsted happened to place the compass near his battery and was startled to notice that the compass needle moved. As Ørsted deduced, this happened because the wire produced a magnetic field around it when it carried a current. If there is no current in the wire, the needle reverts to the alignment with the Earth's magnetic field. As it turns out, an electric current, made up of moving charged particles, produces a magnetic field that circles around the moving current, as shown by these blue lines. If you reverse the direction of the current, then the magnetic field around the wire moves in the opposite direction, and the needle on the compass flips to reflect the change in field. If you move the compass to a new spot near the wire, the needle will realign with the direction of the magnetic field in that particular location. Ørsted's accidental discovery was solid evidence that electricity and magnetism were related phenomena. The announcement of his findings incited a tremendous outbreak of research in the all right, so we have seen uh, Ørsted's discovery and we have one more important discovery uh, that is the discovery of Ampere. Ampere discovered if you have a small current loop and if you look at the magnetic field produced by this uh, small current loop it's identical to that of a bar magnet. So magnetic field of a small current loop 
is identical to that of a magnet. Now you can see here uh, the convention uh, for uh, finding the magnetic field. If you have a current loop where the current is uh, flowing in the wire in the counterclockwise direction with the right hand rule, if you curl your fingers around the uh, loop in the pointing in the direction of the magnetic field, your thumb points uh, out of plane uh, approaching towards you and this is basically corresponding to a north pole configuration and here we have the if you reverse the direction of the current the magnetic field points into the board using the right hand rule which is giving you a south pole uh, configuration so uh, basically this you can see also for a current carrying wire if your thumb points in the direction of the current your fingers will curl around the uh, wire to show you the direction of the magnetic field so at a distance r we're going to measure a magnetic field and similarly if you look at the magnetic field created by a current loop uh, you will find that uh, if you curl your fingers in the direction of the electrical current your thumb points in the direction of the uh, magnetic uh, field so this current is flowing in this direction so if you curl your fingers in the direction of the current and four fingers your thumb points in the direction of the magnetic field now if i look at uh, a bar magnet so basically uh, ampere realized that if you have a current that is uh, inside a current loop so you can see this current is uh, approaching you uh, at the top and it is uh, going into the uh, board at the bottom so uh, this is our current that is coming out of the board and uh, and at the bottom we have the current going into the board so this is part of a current loop here so we have a current loop uh, and therefore the magnetic field created by this current loop it basically shows that there is a north pole forming uh, on one side and there's a south pole forming on the other side and if you look at the field lines that are uh, at a distance from the current loop so for for the current uh, basically these are the field lines H uh, field lines you can see that are um, forming or circulating around the uh, current loop uh, this is very similar to the external field of a, a bar magnet so if you look at a bar magnet you can also see a north pole and a south pole forming and you can see the field lines emanating out from the north pole and approaching the south pole and if you look at uh, the bar magnet and then you imagine that you have these current loops around it basically the field lines uh, will show you that one side is acting as a north pole one side acting as a north pole the other side acting as a south pole you have field lines that are coming out from the north pole and going into the south pole uh, so basically we can think of a magnet as a collection of small uh, current loops Okay, so that brings us to Ampere's hypothesis. So Ampere's hypothesis is the following. Well, Ampere says that all magnetic effects are due to current loops and that the magnetic effects in magnetic materials
are due to what he calls molecular currents. So this will actually uh, correspond to uh, spin and angular, spin and orbital motion of electrons. We will we will see that uh, in the upcoming uh, videos. Now, how much is the magnetic field created by a current carrying wire? Um, so the answer to this question is if you look at the magnetic field at a distance r created uh, around the current carrying wire, this magnetic field in SI units, uh, as we will show later on explicitly, is given by I divided by 2 pi r. So this is in SI units. Okay, so one exercise I would like to uh, go through is to convert this to mixed SI CGS units. So first of all, uh, we should note that a current using SI units, a current of 1 ampere passing through an infinitely long straight wire generates a field strength of 1 over 2 pi amps per meter at a radial distance of 1 meter. Okay, so uh, that's, that's basically saying h is a function of r, it is i divided by 2 pi r, where i is in amperes and r is in meters. So that is using SI units. Now the question I would like to ask is uh, what is the expression for H of R using a mixed CGS EMU and SI units. So basically I would like to consider current in amps R in centimeters and H in Ørsted. So uh, I would like to use this uh, unit. So let me uh, note that uh, EMU, electromagnetic CGS uh, or CGS EMU units for magnetic field is Ørsted, for current is ab amps and for distance is centimeters but we're going to use a mixed unit system and one ab amp is 10 amperes so if you were to convert to CGS EMU you would use this but instead I would like to use uh, the current in amperes the magnetic field in Ørsted field strength in Ørsted and R in centimeters so how can I uh, figure that out? The magnetic field H created by 1 ampere at a distance of 1 centimeter. So let's look at if I is 
one amps r is one meter uh, or 10 to minus 2 meters which is one centimeter how much would be the magnetic field then h would be equal to 1 amp divided by 2 pi 10 to minus 2 so I would have 100 uh, divided by 2 pi and what is the unit of H in SI it is amps per meter so the answer to this question is H Uh, that is given in amps per meter is 100 over 2 pi amps per meter so let's convert that to CGS EMU so now I want to go to CGS EMU uh, I know that uh, one Ersted is 1000 over 4 pi amps per meter and therefore uh, 4 pi 10 to minus 3 Ersted is 1 ampere per meter so my H would be then the field strength that I'm cal trying to calculate is 100 over 2 pi amps per meter times 4 pi 10 to minus 3 Ersted so this would give me a 2 here uh, and then I would have 110 to minus 3 0 0.2 Ersted uh, of magnetic field or field strength would be 0 0.2 Ersted now going from one unit system to the other we should have in general H a number multiplied by current divided by uh, the radial distance R the the physics will not change by changing the unit system therefore we're just going to change the uh, the prefactor uh, in order to show the result okay so now i would like to know alpha uh, well i know that my distance is uh, one centimeter and my current is one amp and therefore I will find that alpha is equal to 0.2 Ersted times 1, 1 over 1, which is 0.2. So that is 2 divided by 10. So the magnetic field around a current carrying wire as a function of radial distance from the wire is given by 2i divided by 10r in mixed CGS EMU SI units so in this expression I have current in amps R in centimeters and magnetic field is in Ersted We're going to do similar exercises and we will actually also figure out why is one Ersted 1000 over 4 pi ampere per meter in the upcoming videos. But for now, here is one example of how to convert between uh, unit systems. So once again, if we were to use the CGS EMU unit system, you would put one ab amp is equal to 10 amps. So it would be in ab amps not in uh, amps and I leave it uh, to you to uh, find the correct conversion from uh, SI units to CGS EMU units not the mixed units but the actual uh, CGS EMU units okay so we have seen that uh, we have an important discovery of Ersted a magnetic needle in the compass is deflected in the vicinity of a current carrying wire and Ampere discovered that the 
magnetic field created by a small current loop is identical to that of a bar magnet. And uh, we can basically envision the bar magnet as a collection of current loops uh, that will produce a north pole on one end and south pole on the other hand. So the field lines will be coming out from the north pole and approaching the south pole. Uh, and uh, basically at the microscopic level in magnetic materials, these currents come from uh, molecular currents. That's what Ampere uh, calls them. And these are actually, actually uh, due to spin and orbital uh, motion of the electrons that we will talk about. And the amount of field strength, the magnetic field strength created at a distance r from a current carrying wire is i over 2 pi r in SI, uh, where i is current, r is radial distance. And uh, that in SI we have ampere meter and ampere per meter for the magnetic field strength. Then I wanted to figure out how can I write the same equation using mixed CGS, EMU and SI units where I take h for Ørsted, uh, Ørsted for h, centimeter for r, and amperes for current. So, uh, so here I'm using CGS EMU mixed uh, with SI, so I didn't convert the current. Well, the way to do that is if you, you can just uh, assume some values. The current is 1 ampere, the radial distance is 1 centimeter, which is 10 to minus 2 meter. Using SI units, the field strength is 100 divided by 2 pi amps per meter. Since 1 Ørsted is 1000 divided by 4 pi amps per meter, the field strength turns out to be 0.2 Ørsted. And when you change the unit system, all you have to do is change the prefactor. So the prefactor instead of 1 over 2 pi will be some alpha. So alpha times i over r and alpha should be 0.2, which is 2 over 10. So the correct answer for the mixed CGS EMU SI units for the field strength around a current carrying wire is 2i divided by 10r, where the field strength is measured in Ørsted.